prototype that I've been testing for a pretty unique lens. This is a replica of the Cook Speed Pancro Series 2, which is a famous classic cinema lens. This is a new project from Mr. Zhou at Lens Light Lab, and I first heard about this lens, I guess, a little over a year ago, and pretty much developed an obsessive interest in this design. A couple months ago, a gentleman named David over at Light Lens Lab reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to test one of the prototypes. Of course, I immediately said yes, and I'm gonna be honest, this really has not left the camera since it arrived. So a little information on this lens. So the Light Lens Lab Speed Panker replica is a 50 millimeter F2 lens with a design based on on the Cook Speed Pancro Series 2 from 1945 that was designed by Gordon Cook. The prototype that you're seeing here is a Leica M-mount version, which will adapt to pretty much any mirrorless camera, but they're also going to offer it down the road in Leica thread mount, EF mount, as well as an optical block slash cinema housing in PL mount. This is probably my favorite lens to come out in a long time. It's a character lens that exhibits the optical and visual qualities that have been sought after in the movie industry for years. The original Speed Pancros are extremely expensive and they're very hard to find. They were designed to cover a Super 35 movie format and the new design is actually optimized for a full frame sensor and the aim is to be used for both video and stills. Cook lenses have been sought after in the movie industry since their introduction in 1932. They've come in many versions over the years and as their designs have evolved in the last century to match the technologies of film and digital capture, the company is really famous for what filmmakers refer to as as the Cook look. Speed Pancro lenses are still in very high demand today. This lens in particular is based on the second iteration, so it's the Speed Pancro II from the mid-1940s. So a quick word about modern versus vintage lens design. So if you're interested in lenses that exhibit a very modern look, that are ultra high resolution, super sharp, this is not your lens. This is a modern interpretation of a vintage lens design. So it's not perfectly corrected for every type of aberration. It's not designed for an impressive MTF sharpness and resolution. It's a character lens. And it's got a warm and natural rendering that's gonna give you a very cinematic look in camera. It's been really cool that I've had this lens for a couple months now because it's given me an opportunity to really get to know the lens and really get to know the optical look. I even got to take it to Japan when I went in December and just shooting on this lens is just an experience that it gives your images a look that you really can't get on other lenses. It's unique, it's special, it's interesting, it's very warm, it's very painterly at times. This is something that I really like. The optical design is a unique thumbprint that renders a look that you won't find on any other lens. That's kind of why these are highly sought after. Images have a very cinematic quality where every frame looks somewhat like a movie and we're going to talk about what these visual characteristics are but first I want to talk a little bit about Light Lens Lab. So Light Lens Lab started in 2018 in Shangrao by the elusive and mysterious optical designer known as Mr. Zhou. The company specializes in research and development and they specialize in vintage lens design. So they currently offer reproductions of classic and rare vintage lenses from the optical formulas all the way down to replicating the specific glass types used for each element. But instead of being super expensive collector lenses, these lenses are actually affordable tools for actual use by photographers and filmmakers. This, of course, is right up my alley. The SP2 is actually the third lens from Light Lens Lab. Their first lens was a replica of the original 8-element 35mm Leica Summicron from 1958, and the second was the extremely rare 50mm F2 Elcan that Leica produced for the military in 1972. Unlike the previous replica lenses, the Super Pancro 2 design has been modified to accommodate the full-frame sensor coverage. So in essence, it's an updated replica. This is actually something that I've wanted to see a lens manufacturer do for a long time now. So lens design, in general, is a push towards perfection. But it's really cool to see a company embrace classic looks and optical formulas that have historical significance. This is something that's really exciting to me. Another interesting observation about this whole idea of taking a cinema lens and applying it to still photography, if you look at Leica and the original Leica design from Oscar Barnack, Oscar Barnack essentially took 35 millimeter movie film, turned it sideways so he could maximize the space used on the negative, and made that the impetus for the still cameras that we still use today. That is full frame format, and so it's kind of interesting to see 
Light Lens Lab take a lens that was designed for cinema and reapply it for, I think technically you could say cinema and stills at this point. So it's kind of full circle in that Leica tradition. The Cook Speed Pancros optical formula is essentially a double gauze or a Zeiss Planar derivative. The Light Lens Lab SB2 uses a seven element, five group version, which is very similar to the original Taylor Hobson design. So it's also worth noting that Taylor Hobson was the first to realize that the design in this case didn't have to be perfectly symmetrical like what we see in the Planar. This design is from the mid 1940s and when it was released, F2 was an extremely fast aperture, but like most vintage lenses, performance is dependent on the aperture stopping down. In fact, the original lenses were recommended for use at about f4. However, shooting wide open is what gives you the Cook look. Images have a dreamlike quality due to the undercorrected spherical aberration, essentially at the point of focus. So subjects are gonna tend to glow a little bit depending on the light source. This is a look that Leica lenses would later become known for in the still photography world, but this was a few years earlier. Another interesting feature in the design of this lens is the low but extremely well-controlled contrast in the way that it renders the image. This is probably my favorite aspect of the lens because you end up keeping a good amount of shadow detail, which lets you control how much contrast you want in the image when you work on it in post-production. This lens, you have to remember, it's from a time before raw files and log video footage, so dynamic range was really important. And it could come from the optical design and even the materials used in the glass. Now, having said that, this is the 21st century, not the mid 20th, and I did shoot raw files for the sample images that you're seeing in this video. And I edited everything in Lightroom, and the goal that I had was to get a nice film look that matches well with the vintage characteristics of the lens, the classic look. For this, I used my two preset packs, Kodakified and Fujified, which work in Adobe Lightroom, they work in Photoshop, and also Capture One. So the idea for these film simulations actually came up about two years ago when I was looking for a way of editing things more quickly using Lightroom or Capture One, and I really wanted to get that classic film look. I missed the colors and the contrast that film gave you, but I really wanted a way to work with those in a modern sense of using a digital camera, where I still have all of the dynamic range and all the versatility that I get in the digital world, and so that was the idea for these presets and how they started. The first task was creating profiles that would reproduce classic Fujifilm stocks, such as Provia, Eterna, Astia, even Velvia. And after I was happy with the 16 Fujifilm simulations I designed, I did the same thing for 16 different Kodak film stocks, including there's six different Kodachrome looks in here. I use these in all of my own work, and I decided this year to make them available for everyone else to use. I'll put a link in the description below this video if you're interested in checking them out for yourself. I was really surprised how well these film simulations worked with the look that this lens gives. It really is a fulfillment of what I had in mind when I started putting these together. So let's talk a little bit about the thumbprint that you're gonna get from the lens itself in terms of characteristics. So this lens renders a lower contrast, I mentioned that earlier, which I actually love, especially wide open, but the downside of this design is that it is extremely prone to flare. This can be used as a look to the image in the right conditions, but it also tends to show up when you really don't want it. And so it's a trade-off in the optical design. Highly recommended though that you use a hood as much as possible. The prototype that I'm using has a screw-in type hood. The production version is actually going to have a reed style clip on hood for easy handling. And I'll talk about some of those differences in a minute. This lens does give you an early cinematic quality to it, which I have absolutely fallen in love with. It's a softer, warm look that gives a very natural rendering. The out of focus areas, they become very painterly without being too gimmicky, which is something that I really like. And it's really easy to see why filmmakers love this lens is it gives a very period mid-century look. And so if you look at films like Midnight in Paris or Mr. Turner, you're gonna see that look of that vintage speed Pancros are known for. Lens design has always been a discipline whose goal is optical perfection. The biggest limitations have always been the materials, manufacturing, and even the end cost, depending on the period and point in time when the lens was made. You know, do the best with what you have available. But over the years, those limitations have really defined specific looks to specific eras. And for those of us who don't view photography as a pixel peeping game, you know, for those of us who want to control the overall look, the feel of the images, and have a soul in what we want to create, this cinema lens defined an era of imaging. So to have this as an option that is not an overpriced heirloom that only collectors can afford, 
It's a really exciting proposition for creativity in photography and filmmaking. In terms of ergonomics and handling, I really love the size of this lens. It is very small, it's very stealth. It works very well in the M ecosystem because you're not gonna block the rangefinder. It is an F2 lens, so it's not gonna be very big. There's no autofocus mechanism in here. So the whole size of the lens can pretty much be a little bit bigger than the diameter of the elements themselves, which I really like. You've probably also noticed this vintage double style focus tab, which I really like for two reasons. One, it's really easy easy to use. I like focusing tabs because they give you a mental sense of where the lens is focused before you pull the camera up to your eyes so it goes a little faster in terms of acquiring focus. The other thing that I like is these hang down and they balance the camera out so when you sit the camera down it doesn't have the tendency to bend forward. Now as I mentioned this copy of the lens is actually a prototype so I want to talk a little bit about what some of the minor differences are going to be between this and the actual production version. This prototype is essentially an aluminum vessel just for housing the optical stack and giving giving you an idea of the final lens and how it's gonna feel, what it's gonna look like. The production models will be full brass with a high gloss paint on the black versions that Light Lens Lab are saying is the same thing you're going to find on high-end piano design. And the lens coating is actually gonna change also. It's gonna be a lot closer to the original 1940s version. So you might be wondering if there's any alternatives to this lens that are gonna give you kind of a similar look. And the short answer on that is not really. It becomes difficult because the speed pancro design was so unique and so sought after. Now you can find the original speed pancros. They are very rare. When you do find one of the original ones that this lens is based off of, they're going to be very expensive and a lot of times due to their age, you might have problems with fogging and fungus and balsam separation and all those wonderful things. Plus, you're going to have to have it rehoused in something that will fit into a modern camera. I like the fact that this is an M mount because it's easily adaptable to any mirrorless or you can just use it on M cameras. Now, there were other early F2 lens designs. If you look at stuff that Zeiss was making or even some of the early Nikon lenses that are derivative from those Zeisses, you could probably match a little bit, but I think all of those looks are so unique. It just depends on what it is that you're going for. So it's kind of hard to find something that's in this territory especially at this price point, which I want to talk about also. Now, at the time I'm filming this video, Light Lens Lab have not announced a specific price for this lens. However, they have said on their blog that it will be more than the Elcan 50mm replica that they did, but not more than the 35mm 8-element Summicron replica. And of course, the prices will vary depending on the material and finish of the lens that you want to get. They're going to offer varieties of these. But it's interesting to think that this is a lens that otherwise would cost you thousands and thousands of dollars, which will Will probably be in the thousand dollar ish range. So, what you want to do if you're interested in getting one of these is keep an eye out on popflash.com. I'll put a link in the description below. They are the US carrier for Light Lens Lab and retailer, and they have, I've had really good experience with them in the past. They're quite awesome. So, that, my friends, is a lens that I have been very excited about. In fact, I can't remember the last lens that I knew that was coming that I just couldn't wait like this. I've just been obsessed with this lens. It has been so much fun to shoot on. If you guys have any questions about this, this, please drop them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, later.